Okay, here's part two of the carving a stamp for September 1st. Um, I'm trying to carve a stamp for every day of September. And I'm not sure if I'll do all of them on video or not. Um, but I thought I'd at least do some of them on video. So I finished my ruler and right now I'm just kind of going around the edge to uh, clean it up and widen it from the edge of the rubber a little bit so that it's easier for me to cut apart and cut like this section right here off. So now I'm going to, I'm getting ready to do the lines and the words to do. And then I should be near completion. I'm hoping that I won't need to do a part three. Let's see if I can get this finished. So here's a close-up of what it looks like right now. Or oh, I'm going to start on the letters first. I don't want the letters to touch the top line. I'm not sure why. It just I think it makes it easier for me. Um, letters is sometimes the hardest thing you can you do because the smaller they are, the tighter the space is. But I have seen so many beautifully carved stamps with like Japanese writing and just all kinds of lettering that you would not believe. Something to aspire to, definitely. Um, let's see, I'm trying to stay in camera. But here's an O, and here, this is kind of fun. If you stick the edge of the carver down and then spin the rubber around, you tend to get kind of a neat circle. Not always perfect, but I mean the sharper the tool, the easier it is to get it to be round. Now I'm going to try to round out the edge without carving into the T. It's hard for me to see when it's so far away from my face. Let's see. I know there are people who carve the whole thing with a straight blade instead of a gouge like I use. Um, and I say just try it out and see what works best for you. Um, because everybody kind of has their own strengths and weaknesses when it comes to tool usage and for each for each tool I mean, it just handles differently, and, like, I do it differently from some people because I put the blade inside this pen, hold this nib holder for calligraphy. Um, it fits better in my hands. It doesn't all, it wouldn't always work for everybody, but I've, you know, through trial and error, I found out that it fits the best for me, and I get the best results. If I were not so out of practice... I've done lots of images where um, it looks like a cartoon, so you could color it in like a coloring book, you know, just very exacting detail and everything, and I am working on getting back up to that level this month because it's a, it's a pastime that I just really, really enjoy. And I found that the the rubber that I get isn't so expensive that um, that I can't afford to do it most months. It's just that I need to carve things that I will use or maybe I can sell them so that I can kind of... What's the word? 
justify continuing making them. So, I think there might be some stamps for sale under my business name, Flamingo Door. Um, if you have any ideas for what I should carve that maybe you want me to stamp some stickers for you or want to do like a custom order um, after you see how well I begin to carve again after a few sessions I'm sure then you can just let me know in the comments um, like if you have a suggestion for what what stamp I should carve in the next video or something. I'm doing this for the whole month of September to try to get myself back in the habit. I used to carve any anywhere from 2 to 14 stamps a day depending on the size of them and the difficulty level. So And I prefer to make all my stamps smaller than a pocket in a pocket letter. They're easier to handle, easier to mail. They don't take up so much rubber at once for one image. Although I have carved bigger, I've I it, they're not easy to store when they're that size. At least I haven't found a, a way yet. I have I think I might be able to put them in my new way of storing my stamps, but I haven't tried putting my handmade stamps into that storage yet. All right. The letters are about pretty much done. I'm not ready for a tester yet because I haven't carved out all the lines to see so that they don't get lost in the ink. But now I'm going to do the lines. Oh, my hand is in the way again, isn't it? All right. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way, but the camera's in a weird place. And I like the hand-drawn look to the lines. I don't think I would have enjoyed using a ruler because <clears throat> carving a straight line is the same as drawing a straight line. It depends on the steadiness of your hand. It's really hard to carve next to a ruler. So I go for the purposefully doodled look rather than the computer generated look or the almost but not quite perfect look. <laughs> Let's see. So yeah, if you have a suggestion for what I should carve next or in the next few days. Um, post your idea in the comments and I will do my best to come up with something. One thing I love to do is I love to look at stamp sets that I want to buy but they're not really in my budget right now so I will trace the design off of my computer screen <coughs> and then I will carve my own and sometimes it'll be very much the same and sometimes I'll make it different so if the image is an outline image I might make a filled in image or even both and so that I could do two, stamp two layer stamping <coughs> or something like that or I can alter it in any way I want to before I carve. It's the beauty of carving your own stamps. You can do whatever you want. I can, I can have my kids draw me a picture for coloring in or you know I, could, I can carve their signature for their name. 
Okay, now is where I wish I could find my larger gouge because it's like the third most used tool. And it's just, it's a size 2 and it's just a V and it would get these bigger parts out a lot faster. But I can't find it. So, there's two ways to do it and I'll demonstrate both ways. One is to just keep going at it with the tiny gouge. And, and hope you don't cut into your design too much or too deeply into the white part of the rubber. And the other without the gouge, I mean, the other way is to use the knife and go down the line you carved but at an angle away from the line you want to keep Sh kind of shallow so that um, you don't um, cut too deep but also not too shallow because you want to actually pull that gray away See. Yeah, I think I'll do it that way. Seems to be faster than the other way. Oop, see there, I cut into the line. Let's see if I can leave it there and maybe the ink pad will ignore the slip up. Sometimes it will, and sometimes it'll share with the whole world that you screwed up. <laughs> Rubber can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on how patient you are with it and how pliable it is. Obviously, the... the the tougher the rubber, or the older the rubber, um, the flakier it'll be, like, crumbly, and less forgiving. And the newer and more flexible the rubber is, the more forgiving it'll be. So I wouldn't recommend using old erasers for this, but maybe some newer ones that you bought in the last few months that you just didn't get around to using would be okay. I fear this will go into a video number three, and I'm hoping not. But I do tend to be more of a perfectionist with my stamps than with my paper crafting and art journaling. So we'll see. That one just popped right out. And I already can see I'm going to have to go back with the gouge tool to clean up closer to the lines a little bit. But that's okay. I think this actually saves time in the long run. So, I was thinking about 
turning these stamped images into stickers to use for my pocket letters because I usually include planner stickers. Um, but not all of these stamps that I make this month have to be for planner. I want them all to be relatively the same size, but if they're smaller, that's okay too. I just want them to fit in this space that I carved out in my planner um, so I can keep track of the one stamp a day that I carve. So, if I make some stickers, I have that um, photo sticker paper, and I found that my Memento dye inks work really well on that, even though it's semi-glossy. Um, they work really well. They don't um, smear like I had feared they would. So, that's good news because I kind of ran out of the older matte sticker paper from Avery that I had used before. Ooh. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to cleaning up these lines. So, I've had these songs in my head, and I keep thinking that I should have music playing in the background of my videos, but I don't know if that would mess with uploading because of copyright issues or not. Um, but what if I had, like, Pandora playing in the background, which is, like, an online radio station? Um... I mean, does anybody know what the rule is for that? Because I want to do some art journaling videos. I'm thinking about Carve September and Glue Book October. Um, because my kids, well, specifically my youngest, wants to do... Um, some glue book art journaling, very similar to something I used to do a long time ago. We watched a couple videos on YouTube, and now she's asking for magazines to cut up. So I'm thinking that by October we'll be in our homeschool routines that Maybe we can fit in something like a daily glue book adventure. And somehow I might be able to do a video. Um, obviously I've got to think more on that. I kind of formulate plans in my head for a very long time before putting them together. But along the way I tend to share what my ideas are. Okay. I'm going to cut off the outside of the image that I don't need because it's starting to get in my way. And I'm going to carve right I'm going to carve it off right up to the line um in in most cases. I like to be able to see exactly where my stamp is going to be after I stamp it. Um, and since the rubber isn't transparent, like a clear stamp, I will just cut away the excess. I know one of the reasons I don't like using block stamps is because there's always that square or rectangular shape even if the stamp itself isn't square or rectangular. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and do a part three where I test it and finish it up. So, I'll be right back. Bye!